Ubuntu has released version 19.10 of their hugely popular operating system. Here's a full review of newest features, improvements, pitfalls, and benefits. Is this truly the dawn of the ermine? Let's check it out. Free your mind. And welcome to another exciting review by Free Your Mind. Today we're looking at Ubuntu's latest release, 1910, just released a couple of weeks ago. We're going to look and see all of the greatest features, how user-friendly it is, uh, how well things are working out of the box, and how customizable it is. I'll jump right into the review, but before I do, I'm humbly obligated to ask for you to like this video and also subscribe if you'd like to see more. Liking these videos and subscribing does help support the show and it keeps my kids fed, so... Thank you. Thank you for feeding my children. <laughs> so first, let's take a look at the new features. This edition comes with GNOME 3.34, the latest GNOME release, the, the latest release of the GNOME desktop environment. And with that comes all of the special improvements uh, with GNOME. A lot of stability features. They've claimed that it is even faster yet than before, as is being claimed with every release. I do have to say, it actually is faster. I'm going to give them that, and that's awesome. Uh, there is the new app folders feature where you can take apps and you can merge them together. So if I wanted to combine these apps into an app folder, and now there's a folder here called Office, and I can left click it to open the contents of that folder if I wanted to better organize things in the overview. And I can simply left click and drag once uh, they're opened up and pull it out, and that brings things back to normal. And if you wanted to rename the folder, you could just right-click it, and you can choose whatever you want. Cool. And there you go. Now up in the C's is the cool office apps. So, fun stuff. I, I like this feature. I think it's actually a good way to remedy something that I was hoping that has would come back in uh, that was available in earlier versions of GNOME, which is the ability to sort by categories. That was honestly, that was super helpful, as is with all of the desktop environments, how they can organize apps by their category. And uh, one of the struggles for me in GNOME Shell in the GNOME desktop is that uh, you can either choose the frequent apps or you can choose all. And you kind of have to sift through them. So if you have a lot of applications installed, you have to use your mouse and you have to scroll and keep on scrolling and scrolling. And get, in this case, there's only two pages, but if I had a lot of apps installed and I didn't want to use the search for some reason, if I'm more of a mouse user and I just wanted to use my mouse to get to them. Well, this remedies that issue by being able to put things into app folders, which could re very well compensate for different categories. So if I was doing stuff with media and I created a new app folder here and I called it media. And so now any of my uh, media app folders, let's say videos, and they go in there. So now once I go to all folders, I can left click that and I can easily access them. So I'm actually very grateful that the GNOME developers created this feature. That's a phenomenal benefit. A couple of smaller improvements in the settings. You'll see that the backgrounds window has been updated so you can more easily choose the background or the lock screen or both. And that's very handy once again. So great benefit. And users of the newest hardware will be pleased to know that this version of Ubuntu comes with the uh, Linux kernel version 5.3.0. That's the latest that's out there. So those with newer hardware, uh, worry not, because uh, whether it's new graphics cards or drawing tablets, uh, Wi-Fi adapters, this uh, new kernel has got you covered, which is great. The newest versions of Firefox and Thunderbird are uh, available as well running Firefox version 70, I think, yeah, 
And for those of you like me who use your email a client for everything because your business and your personal life still depends on it, Thunderbird version 68.1.2 is available on the latest version of Ubuntu here. And then for those of us workaholics, LibreOffice comes with the latest version 6.3.2.2 and that features uh, nifty things like the tabbed interface which gives it more of a modern feel and look which is fantastic. People doing homework or uh, writing reports worry not, the latest Office uh, open source Office benefits are here. Okay so let's jump into a couple of personal thoughts here. Let's look at user friendliness. So those who have viewed previous reviews I've done will know that I find GNOME a mixed bag. I think that the desktop is not for everybody. I've enjoyed it since it came out, uh, since GNOME 3 was released. I've enjoyed the ability to hit the super key or the Windows key and to do the search uh, right out of the, the box. And it's fast and responsive, and that's phenomenal. But I know that new users can be affected by this. This can be an issue for some people. Uh, this is a very new interface for some users. So one of the things when you first when you first boot up to Ubuntu after you've installed it, you're greeted to the connecting your online account. So you can uh, left click to connect your Google account. And if you have an Ubuntu uh, one account, you can connect that as well as Microsoft or others. Uh, I I'm skipping that. And then if I want to send my information to Canonical to help improve their uh, list of hardware compatibility, which, hey, I'm a nice guy, so yeah, enjoy Canonical. Enjoy my hardware info. <laughs> and you can set the location services. So the welcome screen is helpful for a few basic things. It gets you going. One of the benefits about GNOME is it is very cloud-friendly. A lot of your uh, internet-based resources are available and easy to access on GNOME. And it's great that they run this first time startup window in order to get things going. And once you're done, you can click on done or you can open the software center and you can start installing new apps. And they even show you a list of a couple of popular items. Yay. And then you click done. But the problem is that's it. For new users of GNOME, they're not given much of a walkthrough with how to use it. Now I know from experience, clicking on the help over here does give you a handy desktop guide, but one of the things I feel like Fedora did well is that they started you off immediately with getting started with GNOME. And this is a very helpful window that gives you a couple of introductory videos on how to launch applications, switch tasks, and even use the Windows and Workspaces, which the Workspace feature for a lot of new users is an intimidating thing. This whole idea of what is this on the right, uh, it, uh, they don't, it's not intimidating. They, they just don't immediately grasp it. And so it takes some effort to try to understand how that works or even why they would use it. Many users don't even use the workspace feature. And half the time it's because they don't know it exists or what it does. So I'm glad that they've improved this and that they've given videos that can teach you on how to do it. That being said, there's a couple of critiques I have because this doesn't open up out of the box and users have to search for it amidst this list of help items. Now those who are more patient will probably find it just fine, but not everyone's going to be that way. They're going to want to be taught immediately. They need to be guided and taken by the hand. And if someone's not doing that, they're going to get frustrated. And it might even give them a sour taste of the experience and possibly abandon Linux altogether, all because they didn't immediately get help out of the box. So one of the, the critiques I have is that for user friendliness, if this window was opened by default immediately after setting up the online accounts and running through that uh, first setup window, I feel like that would have been a very helpful thing, especially for Ubuntu, which is advertised as being Linux for human beings, which I believe it is. But this would be just yet another way of what they could have done in order to make it that much easier for people. So that's just an opinion there. Another couple of critiques 
are things like even these videos, uh, launching applications. So user friendliness just means how easy the interface is to use out of the box, but also it's that the teaching material is consistent with what the actual interface holds. So for example, if they're going to the top left up here and using the hot corner to activate the activities overview, well, right out of the box, Ubuntu doesn't do that. Moving my mouse up to the top left does nothing. And that's because they've disabled it by default. Now they have their reasons, I don't fully know what they are, but that's going to be confusing to some users and some users might think that this is a bug or that there's a problem here. They might even misinterpret this to mean that little, those little radial uh, signals right there could just mean that you left click it. So there could be an interpretation thing there. So again, just talking about user friendliness and ease of use. I'm, get, I'm getting a little nitpicky, but that's because I'm just looking out for everyone, the everyday user, the gamer, the developer, the uh, media producer like myself, or, or, or darn near just anyone looking to use the thing. There, that could run a risk of a user friendliness issue. Another thing like with the documentation, uh, same thing. So if you go down and it's talking about the activities overview, you know, just move your mouse pointer to the top left hot corner. Well, that doesn't happen. So I think consistency could definitely be improved as far as documentation and showing people how to use the GNOME desktop. And that's important because this is going to be a new experience for many. That's one of the reasons that this channel uh, exists, that Free Your Mind exists, so that people can easily understand how to use Linux in times like these where it might be lacking. Then we do a bunch of other cool stuff too. So that's one thing. Those are a couple of negative critiques. Uh, on the positive side, this is honestly the best GNOME experience I encounter. And it's for a few different reasons. The built-in Ubuntu extensions significantly improve user friendliness in my opinion. The fact that you have a system tray up here at the top for apps that are running and running in the background like Dropbox or others with that require the use of the system tray. On the default or vanilla version of the GNOME desktop, the GNOME shell, it doesn't have one of those. So users of Dropbox are in a real pickle because they can't use Dropbox. There are many other applications that require the use of the system tray. So the fact that that is there is really, that makes me happy. That makes me super happy. Another thing is the fact that they've turned the dash here into a dock. I absolutely love that. I love that they have made this easily available for people who don't want to have to press the window key or the super key in order to switch between their windows. The fact that they can just go right here and it's ready to go is, is great. One of the things I do really wish they had, though, for the dock was the ability to, when you auto-hide, uh, it doesn't perform true auto-hiding. It's doing what's called IntelliHide. IntelliHide is like the intelligence hiding where it's showing the dock when there is not a window that's maximized. So if I was to maximize this window, now the dock's going to hide. Uh, but if I was to unmaximize it, then the dock appears. I personally enjoy having mine hidden regardless of whether there's a window there or not and the fact that there isn't a setting here to change that kind of sucks for me but that's just me. Again it's a small complaint uh, frankly I'm just happy it's even there out of the box because I feel like that pr that creates a much better experience for most users. For many users who just want the option to be able to switch windows right here or even if they're working on something and if the screen's maximized to be able to switch to a web browser and to go right here and it kind of alleviates a step of needing to go up to activities and to switch if your hand's not on the keyboard for example mine's resting on a desk right now my left hand so it's it's a small time saver but convenience is everything in this day and age. So the fact that that convenience is there, I say good on the Ubuntu developers. I'm, I'm really pleased with that. So user friendliness, I have to hand it to them. With certain customizations out of the box like this, 
they've really gotten me to see the good in Gnome again. They've gotten me to see how they can take it and make it into an experience by default that is much more user-friendly, in my opinion, than the default Gnome experience. The last thing I have to say about user-friendliness is that things just work. I love this about Ubuntu. It's one of the reasons I initially switched uh, many, many years ago, a whole 10 years ago from uh, Fedora and Red Hat over to Ubuntu is because I didn't realize my first version of Linux I tried out was Fedora. And I spent hours just trying, uh, the Fedora 6 was my first distribution. Uh, for, back when it was called Fedora Core. So I did Fedora Core 6, and I would spend hours just trying to figure out as a new user just how to play my music files because they were all MP3 files, and that was a, that's a proprietary codec, and I wasn't able to play my music. So the fact that I can open this up right away and I can start playing my music out of the box because it comes with all of the codecs, I personally think that's phenomenal. I, I love that about Ubuntu. Some open source and free software enthusiasts won't be happy about that because it means that they're including proprietary or non-free software inside of the operating system. So essentially, Ubuntu becomes a hybrid of free, both free and open source software as well as proprietary and closed source software. So Ubuntu is not for hardcore free software enthusiasts. It has a lot of great elements of free software, but it, it, it is not exclusively free software. Okay, so now moving on to the application selection out of the box. So like I discussed, Ubuntu's selection of both open source and proprietary software and applications doesn't always settle well for users who have a firm belief in the free software philosophy exclusively. So the fact that I'm even running this off of uh, OBS Studio or that I have installed the third-party codecs to play music or movies isn't going to bide well with them. But I, I personally believe in making things useful. Uh, even if, uh, if we have a, an open source solution, fantastic, I'm for it. But if we don't have one, well, I'd rather have the convenience and have the capability than not. That's just me personally. You, you may differ, and that's okay. The only criticism I have is in the Snap applications. So many times in things like if I was to try and install, say, uh, Caden Live, the video editor, and I choose to install the Snap version, which you can tell uh, by the source here, and it says Snap Store. Now if I install this, uh, everything installs fast and it works fine and that's great. but I'm noticing personal issues that come up that are exclusive to Snap apps. And this may be just because they need to improve on the technology or it's still developing or improving, but some things just don't work. So just for the sake of example, if I was to launch Caden Live, which launching apps is still while installing them is quicker, launching them is actually still slower than running the non-snap version of them, and that's kind of a disappointment. Uh, you know, I'm running a solid state drive on all of my machines, and the fact that I'm still waiting 5, 7, sometimes 15 seconds to open up an application when it opens up in a half a second using uh, the non-snap method is kind of a bummer. But if I was to go into settings here and I was to... Um, enable the GPU processing so I can use my graphics card in order to do some rendering and playback. It says that has to be restarted to change the setting, and I hit continue. It restarts, but now Caden Live crashes, and it won't open. And this happens each time now, so when I try to launch it, you see it appear briefly, and then it crashes. This problem does not occur on non-snap packages. So I've experienced a couple of things like that when I'm installing packages from the Snap repository, from the Snap store. Things like even GIMP, I have some fonts I use for my artistry work. And when I install those fonts, they go into a different folder here in my home folder. Well, when I install GIMP from the Snap store, it doesn't read all of those fonts. I have to manually tell it where to locate those fonts in order to use them in my graphics editing, in order, to, uh, in order to use them as a text element in my photos I create. 
So the fact that that's not happening, that I have to go through that extra step when with non-snap versions, everything works by default is a disappointment. I'm all for using the containerized idea. I, lo I love the idea that you can constantly update new apps and not need to worry about adding extra rep repositories and the dependencies are there. I think it's a great concept. I feel like the execution is falling behind in terms of other methods like the flat pack, for example, or the app images. But who's to say what will happen in future releases? Maybe these things will get fixed and there won't be a problem. But that's all I have to say about applications. I'm generally, uh, I have, aside from the, those snap issues, I have a great respect for the open source library and the application library here in Ubuntu. I think it's top notch and I don't have to install any other third party repositories to get the things I need. They're all here and I love that. So moving on to stability and compatibility. A couple of minor things I encountered was that uh, the mouse was intermittently freezing, but I was using a KVM switch on my machine. That's not an issue I have with Windows or any other version of Linux. For some reason, it was specific to this release in Ubuntu. But again, that was with a, a KVM switching device, I, a USB switching device where I can hook up multiple machines. So it wasn't a huge issue. Um, one thing that, that was uh, an issue in stability, if I was to install the GNOME Tweaks app, which is the way that you can customize the GNOME desktop, the GNOME shell. When I launch this, you, by the way, you notice how quickly that launched in comparison to Caden Live? That was it's quite instant. Yeah, up and good, good to go. Uh, versus waiting a whole 30, you know, I'm digressing. If I go into the, so, uh, so if I go into the extensions, one of the things I noticed is that the ins extensions included by default for Ubuntu, the desktop icons, which allows you to have these, the app indicators, which allows you to have the, like the Dropbox, the system, a tray for your items up here and the Ubuntu dock those are all enabled at present but the toggle is switched off so it looks like they're disabled when they're not and frankly trying to enable them or disable them with GNOME tweaks doesn't work so even disabling the dock it's not changing disabling this would actually have this dock disappear but nothing happens so a small issue in stability on that end. Um, another thing I was encountering is that if I have multiple windows open and I, I enter the activities overview, usually if I have six or eight or more applications open, they start to cut down on this edge here at the bottom edge of the screen. They start to go beyond the edge of the screen so that I can't see them or organize them. If I do this now, they readjust. So, you know, seven apps, they're fine. But if I throw another app into the mix, when I add another one, like another Nautilus window, a file browser window, you can start to see, again, they start to bleed off onto the bottom edge of the screen. So just a small issue I noticed. So that being said, that those are all of the, uh, the negative critiques I have on there. Okay, the, uh, the positive things about stability is that, again, it's fast. Running the non-snap apps are just really <laughs> snappy, no pun intended. They open up very quickly. Yeah, the fact that these all just uh, are just opening in the blink of an eye is spectacular. And again, a thing that I love about Ubuntu is it just works things just work out of the box. There's no issues playing video or music or compatibility issues. They just work. And I remember feeling that when I was working with Ubuntu for the first time back in 2006. Oh geez, dating myself. But it, 
it was incredible just to be able to play music, watch videos, to browse the web without any display issues on web pages, on websites. This is truly what they say. It's Linux for human beings, and I love that about it. And now I'm going to move on to customizability. I touched on this a little bit at the beginning of the video. The few things that I wished I had, uh, the dock having a true auto hide feature, not just an IntelliHide. I wish the, there was an option to remove the storage devices and other elements in the dock. So I just plugged in a USB flash drive that's running uh, Ubuntu 19.10, and it creates these extra icons here in the dock and I can't get rid of them without ejecting the drive. So if I didn't want these up here, which I don't personally, uh, I don't have a use for these, I don't typically access storage devices this way, I run through files and I, I access them right from here. So to me, they're just taking up space on the dock and I can't get rid of them. So that, that was kind of a customization negative that I was hoping wouldn't be there. Another thing is I was hoping that they would leave that hot corner active. And this may be just the fact that I found it personally handy over the years. But the fact that uh, if you go into GNOME tweaks and you go to the top bar here, you see the activities overview hot corner is disabled by default. Clicking it to enable it will now allow you to move your mouse to the top corner uh, top left corner of the screen, and it will initiate the activities overview. So this is consistent with the documentation. I personally think that it's a helpful thing. Uh, it saves an effort to go over here and make a click. Again, small handy feature that I like. I know everyone doesn't, but it's just something I personally wish was enabled by default. Another small minor critique is that I don't fully understand if this is a bug or an issue, but in the workspace switcher here, I noticed that the top bar is cut right here, which is the normal behavior, but the bottom part of this workspace switcher goes all the way down to the bottom. Design-wise, I don't fully understand that, but again, that's a very small design quandary I'm in. <laughs> I just... I don't know if there was a reason for that or if that's that was intentional, but I just thought that was different. It looks different than the dock, which runs all the way to the full length of the screen here. So it would just almost seem more symmetrical that this was going to the top or that it was just going back to the regular way that GNOME has it, which is just cut off right here and cut off right here. But, but again, that's a very small thing. The, the rest of the customizations, I... Honestly, I absolutely love. I love the new icons that they're working with. I love the design of the icons. I like the the header bar, the way that they've added, the fact they've added by default the minimize, the maximize buttons, the design that they've worked on, the fact that you have a dark theme, which I work with the dark theme all the time. That's my, my go-to when I switch things from Yaru to Yaru Dark. And so the fact that this exists and it's easy to use and it's clean, the customizations they have done, well done Ubuntu developers. I think this is awesome. Uh, so much so that I ended up keeping this on one of my production machines because I just liked using it so much. Uh, even the mouse cursor, I know it's it's hard to see because my system's moving so fast. Curse you, speed. <laughs> but it's, uh, even the, you know, everything just looks modern. So in summary, I'm actually very pleased with this release. I think this is their best release since switching to GNOME 3. I do, I do have a soft spot and I do kind of miss the Unity desktop, but I think that they've done a great job at taking the core principles of their former desktop Unity and including it in here. I would love to see a global menu bar at the top again and possibly move this clock over to here. But again, that's just a personal preference. I like making the most use of the real estate I have and plenty of apps that I use still use a menu bar. So that would be nice to be able to put that up there. But for what they've done with the GNOME 3 desktop, I am pleased and I'm, I'd say good on them, like two thumbs up for this. And I think they did a great job. Because this is so user-friendly out of the box, I find this very beneficial to all users from all walks of life, whether you're using it for business or fun or games, 
it's all available here and it's easy to use. And I feel like this brings the convenience and friendliness and features and benefits of the open source software world and makes them applicable to the user. And that's one of the things I think that Ubuntu does really well. So I would recommend this to darn near anyone who wants to give it a try. I'll include a link to my video below where you can download and install it and try it for yourself or even run it alongside Windows if you don't want to lose Windows and you can have them both running at the same time. So that being said, I've shared enough about my thoughts. What are your thoughts on this release? What are your thoughts on what Ubuntu has done with GNOME and where they've taken it? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Do you prefer the vanilla GNOME experience? What kinds of issues are you encountering? What, you know, t tell me, tell me your thoughts. Tell me your, your feelings on this release. Why you think Ubuntu is fantastic or you think it's the, the worst thing that uh, the open source world has been introduced to? Let me know in the comments section below. Thanks again for watching this video. Again, feel free to like if you found this helpful or meaningful and uh, subscribe if you want to see more videos delivered regularly to you. Until next time, take care and stay free.